Okay, this is our chapter nine review. So, what did we talk about in chapter nine? We talked about first mathematical patterns. First thing is a sequence. A sequence is a order of the numbers. Each one of these numbers is called a term. We have two types of formulas that we use to choose to make these sequences. The first is a recursive definition. The way you make a recursive definition is you get the first term, and then the first term. And then the next one defines the other terms by relating it to each term after the first term to the one before it. So what does this mean? It means we start with a, with a term, and then we talk about how you get from the next term from the previous. An explicit formula tells us how to get to any term. So recursive tells us how to get from one term to the next. The explicit formula tells us how to get to any term. To the nth term, okay, the nth term, which can be, it can be any term we wish. So, tell whether each formula is explicit or recursive. Well, when we're looking, when we start with a number, and I tell you how to get to the next number, this is recursive. When you can find any term that you want, and there's no definition for the first term, this is explicit. And I'm just going to write E and R from now on. All right? That is a formula for any term. This is a formula for any term up here at the top. The next one right here, we see that we are defined the first term. And we're given a definition to find the next term from the previous term. This is recursive. And the last one, explicit. So hopefully you can see the difference. And the big key is the definition for the first term. If you're given the first term and how to get to the next term from the previous one, that is a recursive formula. So using an explicit formula. To use an explicit formula, all we need to do is plug in which term we are looking for. So for this formula right up here, we say that a to the n equals n squared. So what are the first three terms in the sequence? So that means we're looking for the first term, we're looking for the second term, and we're looking for the third term. So all we have to do is inside of the formula right here for n, all we have to do is plug in 1, 2, and 3. So let's do that. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. And those are the first three terms of the sequence. 1, 4, 9. We want it to keep going. We plug in 4, we get 16. And so on, and so on, and so on. Okay. So a recursive definition tells us how we get from the first term to the next term. So. The first term is 5. That's part of a recursive definition. You need to define the first term. To get to the next term, we take the previous term and add something to it. In this case, we have from 5 to 12, we add 17. And that, these two together are a recursive definition. The next one works the same. We're starting at negative 2 to get to the next term, I take the previous term and add, looks like 9. And those are two recursive definitions. Next, we talked about in 9-2, we talked about an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence, uh, in an arithmetic sequence, the difference between consecutive terms is constant. This difference is called a common difference. We're always adding a positive or negative number to the terms of the sequence to get the next term. And it's always the same thing. All right? We have a couple definitions. A is the first term. A sub n is the nth term. N is the number of the term. And D is the difference. So using these, we have our formula, our explicit formula, which we will use a lot. A sub n is equal to A plus n minus 1 times D. Our recursive formula just says to get, the, to get the next number, to get the next term in the sequence, add D to the previous one. That's it. And then we have a definition for an arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean 
We take two numbers, add them together, divide by two, and we can get a number in the middle. Right. So, determine whether each sequence is arithmetic. If so, identify the common difference. Well, here, each step, we're going, this is arithmetic because we're going up by 10. This one, this is, e, and we're going down by 11. It's okay to go down. This one is another yes, and it's plus 3. And finally, each one here is different, so that's no. This is a sequence, it's just not an arithmetic sequence, because it does have a pattern. So, find the 30 second term of each sequence. So, to do this, we're going to sub, we're going to sub A sub 32 is going to equal to A to the A sub 1 plus 10 minus 1 times D. I'm going to plug my numbers in. 34 plus 32 minus 1 times, what's my difference? 3. So this is going to be 34 plus 31 times 3. So we're going to pull up a little calculator, tell me out here, and we get 31 times 3 is going to be 93 plus 34 gives me a total of 127. Same thing for the next problem. The 30 second term is going to equal 23, which is the first term, plus n minus 1, which is 32 minus 1, times my common difference is 7. So we have 23 plus 31 times 7. I'm going to pull up the calculator again to help me out. And we get 31 times 7 is going to be 217 plus 27 gives me a total of 241. Use the formula for, use the explicit formula for arithmetic sequences. So to find the missing term here, all you have to do is add the numbers together and divide by two. To find them, to find a term in to find a term in between two terms, you can find the arithmetic mean. Negative 15 plus 1 is, is negative 14 divided by 2, negative 7. And is negative 7 halfway between negative 15 and 1? Yes. Right here, 14 plus 28 divided by 2 is going to give you 21. And for the last one down here, the format is a little bit different, but we have two terms, right? We have a, a n minus 1 and a n plus 1. So if we're looking at a number line, this is the way these terms are going to go. All right, we're going to start at n minus 1. One more is a sub n. One more is a sub n plus 1. So to find the middle term right here, all we have to do is add these together, divide by 2. 7 plus 1 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. So my mean is 4. Now, this problem is going to work a little differently. Because I already know the mean. The mean is 44.75. Well, to get this mean, I'm going to have to add two things together and divide by two. But I know what one of these things is. One of these things is. One of these guys makes 38.95. Okay? So now I can solve for my other variable. Multiply both sides by two gives me 89.50 equals 38.95 plus y, subtract from both sides, and we get, do this over here, 89.50 minus 38.95, so we get 50.55. 50, 
the other person, the other person makes five thousand bucks, and if I add that with thirty-eight hundred, my average of the two is going to be forty-four cents. Okay. Next, geometric sequences. Arithmetic dealt with addition and subtraction. Geometric deals with multiplication and division. So, in a geometric sequence, the ratio is constant. The ratio of consecutive terms. This is called the common ratio. To find the common ratio, take the second term, divide it by the first term. Or take the third term, divide it by the second term. Take a term and divide it by the term before. Right. Uh, our explicit formula is a sub n equals a times r to the n minus 1. And our geometric mean is x times y to the square root of x times y. Our recursive formula is we are going to take the previous term and multiply by the ratio to get the next term. So, are these sequences geometric? Take the second term, which is 2, divided by the first one, the common ratio is 2. Are all of these two terms 2 times the one before it? So that's yes. And this is the common ratio. For this one, is each one negative one times the one before it? Yes. Well, <laughs> for this third one, we see that 2 divided by 1 is 2, which works here, but 2 times 2 is not 3. So this is now. In fact, this sequence is arithmetic, plus 1 each time. And for the last one, 4 over 10 is 0.4. Multiply each one by 24, and you get the next one. So to find the missing term of the geometric sequence, we are going to multiply the two numbers together and take the square root. So this would be the square root of 5 times 9, 11, 25. So we have to use the calculator for that. So we have 5 times 9, 11, 25. And we just make the square root, and we get 57.5. Same thing for the next one. Okay. We take 5 times 2.8125, and take the square root, and we get 3.75. So to find the geometric mean, multiply the two numbers together, take the square root. So let's use this. During your first week of training for a marathon, you will run a total of 10 miles. You increase the distance you run each week by 20%. So if we multiply 10 miles times 20% is a decimal point 0.2, we get two more miles. So my sequence is going to look like 10, 12, and 7. We only need two numbers to get a common ratio. We know this is going to be a geometric sequence because we're multiplying each one by by what? What's the common ratio? Well, if we need 12 over 10, it's going to be 1.2. And that's going to be our ratio. So to find, to find out how far it runs during the 12th week, we want to use our formula for geometric sequences. So A sub 12 is going to equal the first week, which is 10, times 1.20 point, 1 power. Now this is going to be kind of a big number. 1.2 to the 12 power times 10. Up, right? 12 hours, 10. Okay, so we get 89. Kind of a lot to run in a week. But, maybe possible. So now, instead of just listing the sequences, we are going to start to add them together. 
So that is called an arithmetic series. If it's an arithmetic sequence, and we want to add it all together, we call it an arithmetic series. The sum of the first n terms follows the formula. The sum equals n over 2 times a1 plus a n. And we can use the summation sig symbol, sigma, and lower and upper limits to write a series. The lower limit is the least value of n, the upper limit is the greatest value of n. Find the sum. Three things we need for the sum. So we need the first term. We need the last term. We need the number of terms. Well, the first term is 7, as we can see right here. The last term is 105. The only thing we don't know is the number of terms. So we can solve for the number of terms by figuring out what number term 105 is. So we can say that 105 is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times b. Well, we know that a minus 1, I'm sorry, a sub 1 is 7 plus n minus 1, and my d is 7. So 105 is going to be equal to 7 plus 7 n minus 7. Seven to cancel each other out, but they're on the same side. So 105 equals 7, 10. Divide both sides by 7, and equals 15. Now that we know my sum is 15, I can plug it into the formula. 15 over 2 is going to equal 7 plus 105. And using my calculator, I can just figure this out. And we get times 15 divided by 2 equals And we'll continue from here in just a minute. Okay, so next we're going to talk about arithmetic series in summation notation. So to change something to summation notation, we need to change it to sigma. So we need, we need three things. We need the number of terms and an explicit formula. So to find the explicit formula, we need to just plug this into our arithmetic sequence formula, which says a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, we've used the last so far. So this equals the first term 4 plus n minus 1 times my common difference is 4. So this turns into 4 plus 4 n minus 4. Those two cancel. So a sub n is equal to 4 n. Let's write it as a summation notation. Put our sigma, we start at n equals 1, it goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so there's 5 terms. And my explicit formula is 4x. And that's summation notation. Now it only gets a little bit harder if you don't know the number of terms. Like in this problem, we don't know the exact number of terms. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start it off just like before. So that is a sub n, 100, the first term, plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which is negative 10. So 100 is going to be equal to, we'll start with 100, minus 10 n plus 10. 110 go together to give me negative 10 n plus 1 10. Right. So, my, uh, my sigma notation, we start at n equals 1. My explicit formula is negative 10 n plus 1 10. But the only thing I'm missing is I'm missing the upper limit. I need to know how far this function goes. So to do that, plug in 10. And let's solve for n to see exactly what number term this is. So I subtract one, subtract one ten from that. 
that one tenth of both sides. We have negative 100 equals negative 10, 10 divided by negative 10. Then we have n is equal to 10. So my upper limit is 10. And that is my summation notation. All right. So to find the sum of each finite series, this is arithmetic, we're both arithmetic, there's two ways to do it. The first is put it into the calculator. If your calculator will do summation notation. If not, we need three things. We need the first term, the last term, and the number of terms, all of which we can get from the summation right here. Right. So the first term, plug the lower limit into n, and we can get the first term. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. To get the last term, plug the upper limit into n, and we can get the last term. 5 times 2 is 10, minus 1 is 9. And to get n, we take the upper limit, minus the lower limit, and add 1. So 5 minus 1 is 4, plus 1 more is 5. Once I have all those three, plug it into my sum formula, which we get 5 over 2 times 9 plus 1. And we get 25 from that. Same thing for the second problem. All right? First term, last term, number of terms. First term, plug in 1. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 4 is negative 1. Last term, plug in 10. 30 minus 4 is 26. And n. You subtract the lower limit from the upper limit and add 1. So that is 10. Plug that into my summation formula. So my sum is 10 over 2 times negative 1 plus 26. So 10 over 2, that's 5 times 25, which will give me 125. Find the sum of the arithmetic. Series. Finally, geometric series. Geometric series. The formula for geometric series is listed right here. Also, two other kinds of questions we might have is if the series converges or diverges. If it is an infinite sum and the series converges, we have this formula right here. So this is the, the top one is the formula for a finite series. The bottom one is the formula for an infinite series. Two different things. So what do they look like? Well, here's a finite geometric series. Why is it finite? Because it stops. It doesn't keep going at the end. So for a finite geometric series, all we need to know is we need to know the first term, the common ratio, and the number of terms. If we knew all three of those, we can plug it into the formula and solve. My first term is 1. My common ratio, what am I multiplying by each time? It's 2. The number of terms, well, I'm not sure. So I need to plug it into the formula for an electric sequence, which is a sub n equals a1 r to the n minus 1. So that's 128 equals a to the 1 is 1, so we can leave that out. The common ratio is 2 to the n minus 1 power. I can solve this by taking the logarithm of both sides or changing 128 to something with a base of 2, which is easier. I'll change that to 2 to the 7 equals 2 to the n minus 1 power. So n is equal to 8. And now I plug it into the sum formula. 1 times 1 minus 2 to the 8th power all over 1 minus 2. So calculator. 1 minus 2 to the 8th power gives me negative 225, divide by negative 1, gives me a positive 2.
Okay. Um, so, next question. In March, the family starts saving for a vacation. They are planning at the end of August. The family expects the vacation to cost $13.75. They start with $125. Each month, they plan to deposit 20% more than the previous month. Will they have enough money for their trip? If not, how much more do they need? Well, so they're, they're in March right now, and they're going to save till August. So that's March, April, May, June, July, August. That's five months. So we know they're going to start with 125. Okay. My common ratio, if you're always going to deposit 20% more, my common ratio is 1.20. And they're going to be doing it for five months. Okay. That, now we're going to add all those together. So that's actually the wrong formula. I wish I could go back and delete that, but I can't. So we're going to go with the sum. The sum. We're going to start with 125. We're going to multiply that by 1 minus my common ratio of 1.20 to the fifth power and divide it by 1 minus 1.2. That will give me my sum after 5. So let's try it out. Right. 1 minus 1.2 to the fifth power times 1.5 divided by 1 minus 1.2. It's going to equal 930. So do they have enough? No. So they need a bit. They need a bit more. Okay. Infinite series, does it diverge or converge? If the common ratio is less than one, if it's in between zero and one, it converges. If not, it diverges. And if, it, if you look at it and the numbers are getting smaller, it converges. This series um, converges because the ratio, the common ratio, is one third. Right? If it converges, and it's an infinite sum, we can find the sum by the first term, 3, over 1 minus the ratio. 1 minus 1 third. So that's 3 over 2 thirds, which is going to be equal to 9 over 2, 4 and a half. So adding up all these numbers gives you 4 and a half. And finally, is this series arithmetic? I don't know. Is this series arithmetic or geometric? You should be able to look at it and tell by now. We're going up 2 and 4 and 8. So we're multiplying by 2 each time. So it is, it is a geometric series. Yes, I know. And that's it for the review. Uh, hopefully this helps for the test.